Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1027. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1025 to 1027, click on the link below the video. Hey, in the last video, 1026, we saw how to conditionally format anytime we found the first occurrence of a first and last name, uh, and they voted yes. In this video, we don't want to conditionally format. We actually want to count. And we'll see two ways. We'll do a helper column and then a formula over here to, to count. And then we'll see, sometimes you can't have a helper column, so we'll see that there's a single cell array formula. Now, both of these formulas are in uh, my new book, Control, Shift, Enter, Mastery, and Excel Array Formulas in Chapter 17. Hey, the helper column is going to be very similar to what we did last video for conditional formatting. We can use the count ifs. Now, we have three conditions. We can count yes and then the first and last name. If we were doing that for Sue, this would be the first occurrence. This would be the second occurrence. This would be the third. So we can use expandable ranges. So I'm going to click on A3, colon, and then a comma, and click on my criteria right there and lock that F4. Now we need to come back here, and just as we did last video, but it's actually not as complicated as last video because we're only copying it down, not over to the side also. I simply lock the first one, but not the second one. That means this range will expand as we go down. The A3 will be allowed to go to A4, A5, and so on. Now, the next range, we need to count the first name. So I do colon, comma, and the criteria is simply going to be a relative cell reference. I come back here and I lock. That also needs to be expanding. The third condition and criteria range will be another expandable range and another relative cell reference. So I need to come back here and lock this. Now I can Control Enter. And right now, what does it do? How many uh, r r yes, chin, and fams are there? There's one, right? So when I copy this down, right here for this expandable range, so far through the whole range, it's only seen one occurrence where there's a yes, a sue, and a tran. Down here it sees two. Down here it sees three. And what do we do? We can simply come over here and count if. This whole helper column range, tell me how many ones you see. So the criteria is one. All right, now the array formula is quite a bit more complicated. We're going to start off with the frequency function. As um, I think it's chapter 16, I do frequency function. And then 17 and 19 use the frequency function all over the place. It's just an amazing function. Uh, all the ways you can apply it, all the unusual ways that uh, you can apply it. The frequency function does something simple. You give it some numbers and data array, and then the bins you want to count within. And it will count how many of the data items, which have to be numbers, are in each category. The only trick here is we're dealing with uh, text. So no problem. We actually saw this a couple videos ago where we used the match function to go from text to numbers. So what is the match function? Match function will tell you the relative position of an item in a list. So if I said match, find chin, it would find chin in the first position. But if there's duplicates and we're doing exact match, it'll find the second chin, but it will say it's in the first position. And that's how we're going to uh, create our data array as numbers. So we're going to use match. Oh, but this is going to get tricky. We're trying to do first and last name as a single item. So I'm going to skip over to the lookup array. What do we need to look through? We need to look through both col columns simultaneously. So I'm going to highlight first name and join it with the ampersand Shift 7 to the second column. Now if I highlight this whole thing and hit F9, you can see now it's considered one column. Isn't that cool? Control Z. Well, we need to get uh, the relative position and have it repeated. So we're going to do a, and actually I can just cheat. I can just copy this. We're going to use the same thing here in the lookup value. Now, lookup value is usually expecting a single value, but we're going to give it all the values. 
That's a function argument array operation. Now, usually match gives you one position, like look up chin, it's in one. But because we're giving it a bunch, it'll spit out a bunch of answers. Now, since we want to duplicate one and one there, we're going to type comma and zero for exact match. Now let's see what the frequency gives us. I'm going to click on the data and F9. So those are the relative positions with some repeats. 777 are repeats for SUTRAN, SUTRAN, and SUTRAN. So really we're given all the positions except for 8 and 10, right? Oh, and there's a 2. Joe Finn is repeated also. That's, but notice that we have numbers, and those will be used in our data array. And we want to count how many sevens there are. There's three, Control Z. So what are we going to do? We're going to come, and for the bins, those are the categories which we need to count within. And we need all of the relative positions from 1 all the way to 11. So we're going to create a formula element that will create uh, an array of relative positions. Now, we can pick any one of the columns here inside of the row. That'll give me 3, 4, 5, 6, et cetera. I need 1, 2, so I'm going to subtract from it row of the first one. That'll give me 3 minus 3, which is 0, so I add 1 back in. So that gives me F9. Whoops. That's supposed to be a plus. That will give me, and if I F9, that will give me all the relative positions. So if I have a 7, 7 will now get a 3, because that those are the categories which uh, we're counting within. So 7 will get a 3, Control Z. All right, let's just see how fra frequency works right now. It's not. Um, we haven't considered the yeses yet, but let's highlight this whole thing and F9. So now we get a number in the position of each unique item. Now we need to uh, x out or remove all the ones with no, so we're going to add a condition. Now check this out right here. This match F9, those are giving us all the positions, and I only want the ones that are yes. So I'm going to Control-Z and add inside the if. Now the logical test, I'm simply going to say, are any of you equal to yes, comma. If you get a true there, please allow us to have one of the numbers from the match. Now I'm very carefully going to come to the end. Leave the false off. That'll slap a false in there whenever it gets a false. Close on that. And now when I click the data array, that's in essence a filter right there of the yeses for the numbers being spit out by match, so F9. And there we go, 1, 4, 7, 7, 7. Now when these are counted over by our array of relative positions, there will be a 3 for the 7 and a 1 and a 1. Control C. Highlight the whole thing and let's see what frequency spits out. You've got to be kidding me. 1, 1, and 3. All the zeros represent um, positions that we're not interested in. Control Z. Oh, before I Control Z, any non zero number will be interpreted by the if as a true. The zeros will be interpreted as false. So I'm simply going to say if that whole thing right there, F9, comma, if we see a number, please put a 1. Highlight this whole thing, and now we get falses and 1s. We can slap that inside the sum. We cannot slap it inside of sum product because we the if function in numerous places have array operations, and uh, that trumps everything else. So we have our sum. Now we do Control-Shift-Enter, and you've got to be kidding me. Is that a wild formula? When I do Control-Shift-Enter, it puts those curly brackets in. If that's Excel telling you it understood that this is an array formula. Now if we come down here and type some something new. The helper column gets a 1. The conditional formatting is added, and our formulas update. Control-Z. All right, we'll see you next video.